There are five main principles that the scientific method is based on. All investigations that are to be considered scientific must follow these five tenets. Determinism. As psychologists and researchers, we assume that all human behavior is caused by natural phenomena. This means that behavior is not random. It doesn't just happen. It also means that behavior is not caused by some supernatural force, such as God or magic. Determinism means that human behavior can be understood in terms of natural laws of how the universe works. Then, once we understand what causes an event or behavior, we can use what we know to predict future behavior. For example, if we want to use science to understand how pet therapy works, we make the assumption that spending time with animals causes some sort of change in the person that leads to happiness. Not simply that magic or randomness or even God makes it so that people are happy around pets. Empiricism. Science relies on data to support or refute claims. Data are the evidence in science, the measurements and observations gathered by empiricism. Systematic observations that will be the same when made by anyone else generate empirical data. So for example, if we want to use science to decide if chicken soup makes a cold go away faster, it's not enough to take our mother's word for it. Rather, we need to make empirical observations of sick people who are given chicken soup. One way to do this that can be measured in the same way by anyone else performing the same experiment is to record the number of days a cold lasts for those given chicken soup and those who are not. That would give us some empirical data to help scientifically support or refute the claim that chicken soup makes a cold go away faster. Replicability. In order for a finding to be considered a scientific one, it must be able to be replicated. It needs to be possible to show that what was found did not occur by some fluke chance or by a mistaken measurement. When researchers report their findings, they also describe in detail how they performed the experiment so that others can replicate it. So, if your friend tells you that he had a special dog growing up that could read books, but that dog is no longer around, unfortunately, there is no way to replicate his finding. Also, sometimes published experiments are designed in such a way that others should be able to replicate the findings, but it turns out that no one can. In either case, replicability allows us to verify a finding and a finding isn't considered scientific without it. Falsifiability. In order for a theory or a hypothesis to be considered a scientific one, it needs to be falsifiable through empirical research. In other words, it has to be possible to test it in such a way that it could be shown to be false if it were indeed false. For example, the theory that all dogs like cookies is a falsifiable one because all it would take to disprove the theory would be one dog that doesn't like cookies. For a theory to be falsifiable, it doesn't have to be shown to be false, just that it is possible to find it false. For example, whether or not you believe in creation science, the theory that the book of Genesis and the Bible describes how the world really came to be, one characteristic of science that it does not possess is falsifiability. There is no way to disprove creation science with empirical data. Or also take for example the theory of the Loch Ness Monster. Because proponents of this theory claim that it is a very intelligent creature that can hide itself in undetectable underwater caves, and that is why some researchers into the theory can never find evidence of it, there is no way to disprove its existence. And finally, we have parsimony. 
Science prefers the conclusion that is most simple. So if there are two explanations for some given empirical data, the one that requires the fewest assumptions and is least complicated is the preferred one. This is a beneficial characteristic of science since it helps to prevent outlandish theories that are not very likely to be true. For example, at home you tell your spouse how much you love thunderstorms. That night, your dog wakes you up and it's thundering outside. You could theorize that your dog overheard your conversation the day before and has suddenly developed both the skills of understanding language and empathy in that he doesn't want you to miss this thunderstorm. But a simpler, more parsimonious theory is that your dog, like many other dogs, is simply afraid of the thunder. So there you have it. These five principles, determinism, empiricism, replicability, falsifiability, and parsimony, all help to guide science as an unbiased and verifiable way of knowing. Music